Good evening, afternoon or morning, Movie Cat is at the microphone. Today I will tell you about the film adaptation of one of the most controversial novels in history. For your attention, neo-noir drama about a forbidden love. Lolita. Will you haven't kissed me yet, have you? If you like what I do, please give it a thumbs up, write any comment under the video and subscribe if you haven't already. This story was told to a jury in 1950 by defendant Humbert Humbert, 1950s, United States. A car is driving slowly along a country road, constantly turning into the oncoming lane. The face and hands of the driver, 43-year-old Humbert, as well as the pistol, are stained with blood. He holds a hair clip in his hand and is completely immersed in memories of the girl. People called her different names, Donnie, Lola, Dolores, Lo, but for Humbert she will always remain Lolita. She might not have appeared in Humbert's life, because in his youth he was already in love. In France, 14-year-old Humbert met Annabella. She lived next door and was the same age as him. Passion and mutual feelings flared up between them, but four months later, Annabella died of typhus. These events left Humbert with a deep emotional wound for the rest of his life. 1947, New England. Humbert believes that he probably should have become a priest, but instead he accepted a teaching post at Berkeley. Humbert wants to use the summer to complete his book on French literature, for which he has already received an advance. To focus, Humbert decides to live with friends of his deceased uncle in the small town of Ramsdale, New England. Having reached the place, he sees only a house destroyed after a fire, and then a local widow, Charlotte Hayes, offers Humbert a room. However, Humbert is not interested in Charlotte's charm and hospitality. He sees a cramped room, women's underwear hanging in the bathroom and he decides to leave this city. While Humbert is leafing through the train schedule, persistent Charlotte invites him to see the garden. There she shows him the flowers and then introduces Humbert to her daughter, Lo. A young schoolgirl looks at a magazine while lying on the grass under a watering hose and smiles warmly at Humbert. He no longer hears what Charlotte is saying to him because he cannot take his eyes off Lo. Humbert pays for his stay and moves into the second floor, next to Lolita's room. Days pass, Humbert watches her at every opportunity. Her pampering, carefreeness, emotionality, playfulness and simplicity are typical of any child. But all this awakes lust in Humbert, which he writes about in his diary. He also writes down reflections on the nature of such schoolgirls. Humbert considers them temptress nymphids, unaware of their unlimited power. In the diary Humbert calls her mother, Charlotte, an annoying old woman, a harmful mother and a fat bitch. In the evening, Lolita comes into Humbert's room and says that the radio woke her up and then she goes down to the kitchen to eat. The carried away Humbert, unable to continue working, sneaks down to watch Lolita. She sits on the floor in front of the open refrigerator, takes out berries from there and eats them with her hands. From that day on, the door to his office is always ajar, because this way he can watch Lolita. Also, Humbert hopes that one day his trick will work and, out of curiosity, Lolita will come to him herself. One day she comes in, sits on Humbert's lap and reads his manuscripts. Then Lolita shows how to move her chin in a funny way and they laugh together. Suddenly Charlotte goes upstairs and Lolita quickly runs away to her room. Charlotte asks, is accidentally low interfering with Humbert's work? He smiles and says no. Now Humbert is sure that Charlotte is jealous and angry with her daughter. Later, the three of them sit on a swing in the garden and chat. Energetic Lolita is constantly moving, laughing and fooling around, which attracts Humbert's attention even more. Charlotte leaves to get wine and Lolita tells Humbert in confidence that her mother really likes him. Then Lolita goes into the living room to dance and Humbert cannot stop looking at her and completely forgets about Charlotte sitting next to him. After some time, Charlotte tells Humbert that she wants to turn Lolita's room into a living room because the girl will go to a children's camp and then to a school for girls. Lolita throws a tantrum and screams that she won't go, but her mother doesn't ask her much. The next day, Humbert hears Lolita from the street and runs to the window to look at her. Saying goodbye to her mother, Lolita notices his gaze and runs back into the house. Confused, Humbert does not know how to react to this and what to say. Lolita jumps into his arms and kisses him on the lips, and then she smiles and silently runs away. 
One day, he enters Lolita's room and falls into the closet on her clothes. Through the smell, Humbert wants to feel her presence again. Later, he receives a letter in which Charlotte declares her love and demands that Humbert leave her house before the evening. Otherwise, she will perceive his presence as a reciprocal declaration of love. After two weeks, Humbert and Charlotte get married, but Lolita is not at the wedding because her mother did not bring her on purpose. For the next month and a half, Humbert drugs Charlotte with strong sleeping pills to avoid intimacy. Once the effect of the sleeping pill wears off, Charlotte still has sex with Humbert. But in the process, he thinks about Lolita. Charlotte discovers one locked drawer in his desk. Curiosity and suspicion take over and she breaks it open. Meanwhile, Humbert buys stronger sleeping pills and returns home where he unexpectedly meets an angry Charlotte in tears, who says that she has read Humbert's diary and now knows that her husband considers her an annoying old woman, a harmful mother and a fat bitch. Charlotte says that she will leave today and leave all her property to Humbert, but he will not see Lolita, because she has already finished writing the letter to her daughter. Humbert tries to save the situation and says that these are outlines of a novel, and the names coincided by chance. Humbert leaves to pour them whiskey, and a couple of minutes later he returns and hears the phone ringing. Humbert answers the phone and learns from a neighbor that Charlotte has been killed. Confused, Humbert goes outside and sees his wife on the road, covered with a newspaper. Witnesses say she was running toward the mailbox and was hit and killed by a car. Humbert takes Charlotte's letters and burns them without reading. All property goes to him, Charlotte's house and car, as well as her late husband's gun. He packs his things and leaves for Lolita in Charlotte's car. By telephone, he reserves a double room in a hotel for one night. Humbert arrives at the camp and takes the joyful Lolita from there. On the way, she asks how her mother is doing, and Humbert replies that she is very ill, and in a few days they will visit her together. Lolita believes that Humbert has ceased to be interested in her because he did not even kiss her. Then he abruptly stops the car. Lolita sits on Humbert's lap and kisses him. At the hotel, Humbert's reservation was cancelled, and he could only spend the night in a single room. He agrees but demands to add a bed for his daughter. At this moment, near the reception, Lolita is playing with a dog. The stranger, the dog's owner, tells Lolita that his pet only plays with the nice and cute persons. Lolita and Humbert check into a room and then go down to dinner at a restaurant. There she again sees the stranger and he looks to her very similar to the famous writer Quilty. Later, Humbert leaves her in the room and goes down to breathe a little on the street. There he again sees the stranger who says that Humbert has found himself a great girl. When Humbert says that the girl is his daughter, the stranger confidently declares that this is not true. Confused, Humbert does not see his interlocutor clearly, but does not dare to come closer, and then he returns to the room and falls asleep on the edge of the bed. In the morning, Lolita easily admits that in the camp she has already experienced intimacy with her peer. Shocked, Humbert says that he has never experienced anything like this at that age, and then Lolita sits on top of him, on the way to the next hotel, she wants to call her mother at the hospital. Humbert can put it off no longer and says that Charlotte is dead. Lolita cries all evening, lying on her bed, and at night she comes to Humbert and hugs him. After all, she no longer has anyone close to her. Over the next months, they travel around the United States together, changing hotels one after another. Humbert does not want to return home, because there he will have to send Lolita to school and on the road she won't get away from him. Over time, Lolita's hysterics become more and more frequent, but Humbert is still sure that she is worth it and continues to consider himself happy. He is visited by thoughts of staying in Berkeley and getting a job as a teacher, but he is afraid that Lolita will stop being with him as soon as she has choice and freedom. Lolita is tired of the endless car ride, which is replaced only by the same hotels and she also really misses her mother. Humbert often hears quiet crying from the next room. Time passes, and Humbert sends Lolita to the women's art school in Berkeley. The abbess says that the gymnasium especially pays attention to three areas in education, theater, dancing, and dating boys. After all, according to the abbess, young girls should be properly prepared for their first romantic relationships, so as not to make mistakes in their youth. When a play is put on at school, Humbert tries to forbid Lolita from playing in it. But Lolita has unlimited power over him. Therefore, at night she receives consent to play in the play and also demands that her allowance be increased from $1 to $2 a week. 
Humbert comes to the rehearsal, where Lolita plays the role of a nym, a temptress witch. Her friend shows Humbert the author of the play, Quilty, who is smoking at the very end of the hall. Later, Lolita skips classes and Humbert finds out about it. He is very jealous and therefore does not believe that Lolita was just walking in the park and rehearsing a play. He also demands to show where she hides all her savings. Because Humbert is sure that Lolita is going to run away from him, she says that anyone would run away from such an old lecher and for this Humbert slaps her in the face. Lolita screams for him to kill her like her mother and then she runs away. After a long search, Humbert sees her in the cafeteria. She smiles and talks to someone on the phone. Later, they make up and Lolita herself offers to leave Berkeley but only on the condition that she now chooses the route. The inspired Humbert agrees and they hit the road. Lolita points out several cities on the map and says that they must be there on a certain date. Over time, Humbert begins to feel as if he is being followed. On the road, he notices a car behind, which, as it seems to him, he has not seen for the first time. Humbert thinks that some detective is following him, so he asks Lolita to write down the car number in a notebook. Days pass and the stalker disappears, and Humbert begins to doubt that someone was following them. Crossing the desert, at one of the gas stations, he leaves Lolita in the car, and he goes into the store. Suddenly an unknown person approaches her and they talk. Humbert sees this and runs out into the street, but finds no one except Lolita, and the road is clear to the horizon. According to her, it was an ordinary traveler who was asking for directions. Humbert demands that Lolita not talk to strangers, because she may be in danger. I wonder which one, Lolita asks ironically. The next day, they drive through a dense forest and suddenly the car gets a flat tire. Humbert sees a car behind, which is just coming around the bend. He goes to the car to ask for help, but the unknown person begins to move backwards. Humbert tries to catch up with the unknown person to find out who is driving. But at this moment Lolita unlocks the handbrake and begins to slowly roll down. Confused, Humbert catches up with his car and gets in with Lolita. He memorized the license plates of the strange car and takes out a notepad to compare them with the previous ones. However, Lolita ruined the recording and for this Humbert slaps her. They stop at another hotel and Humbert goes to the market to buy some fruits. At this moment, an unknown stalker stops near the hotel. Humbert buys bananas, visits the hairdresser and returns to the hotel. There he sees a disheveled Lolita, her bare feet in the mud and smeared lipstick on her face, as well as well-known car in the parking lot. She says that she did not go outside, but Humbert accuses Lolita of lying. He throws her on the bed, kisses her and begs her to tell who comes to her and whom does she meet with. Humbert's obsession with Lolita brings him to tears, but she only laughs in response. Humbert has a nightmare, wakes up and takes a gun out of his suitcase. Later, Lolita becomes ill. The doctor diagnoses the virus. She is admitted to the hospital, and doctor promises to be discharged tomorrow. Humbert tells the doctor that he also feels unwell and would like to spend the night in the hospital. But the doctor sends him home. Humbert watches the main entrance to the hospital for a long time and then leaves for the hotel. In the morning he finds out that Lolita was discharged and taken by her uncle with a cute dog. Humbert bursts into the hospital, knocks the doctor down and demands to know where Lolita was taken. Humbert does not find any clues other than his uncle's handwriting. Over the next few months, he visits all the previous hotels, finds the same handwriting and different pseudonyms in the registration books. But everything is useless and Humbert loses hope of finding Lolita. He is no longer sure whether the kidnapper is real or whether it is Humbert's invention because he left notes himself in hotels in the same way. Humbert returns to Berkeley, and after three years he receives a letter from Lolita. She is married, expecting a child, and experiencing great financial difficulties. It's hard for Lolita to write this, but she really needs help. Lolita hopes that Humbert is no longer angry, and she would be eternally grateful if he could send a check for $300 or any other amount. After reading the letter, Humbert gets drunk in despair and shoots at the target with a pistol. The next day, Humbert arrives at the address he found on the envelope and sees a small one-story house. He really wants to see who kidnapped his Lolita and is hostaging her here. The matured Lolita opens the door for him and invites him inside. 
When Humbert sees Lolita's husband, he is disappointed, because the man who was stalking them was much older. Humbert asks to tell who Lolita left him with then. Lolita is surprised that Humbert did not guess on his own. It was Quilty, an old friend of the Hayes family. Lolita knew him from the age of 10, and it was he who staged the play at the gymnasium. Everyone knew Quilty as a lover of young girls and boys. He invited them to his house and made group films for adults. Lolita refused to appear in films because she was in love with Quilty and only wanted to sleep with him. Then Quilty simply kicked her out into the street. Lolita worked hard to earn a living until she met her future husband. Humbert examines Lolita and sees only a distant echo of that same nymphite, but even grown up, pale, with someone else's child under her heart, she still drives Humbert crazy. He says that their old car is only about 30 steps away and invites her to leave with him right now. Lolita doesn't understand and asks if she needs to sleep with him in the hotel to get the money. Humbert explains that he will give her the money anyway, but he is still madly in love with her and offers to run away with him. Lolita considers Humbert crazy and refuses. She says that she would rather go to Quilty, whom she really loved. Humbert gives her all his money, $4,000, finds out the address of the Quilty estate and finally asks if he will ever deserve her forgiveness. Having heard nothing in response, Humbert gets into the car and looks at Lolita for a long time, as if for the last time. For a moment, she seems to him again to be the same cheerful and carefree person he met in the house. He arrives at Quilty's estate and finds him in a huge house and points a gun at him. Quilty pretends that he is not afraid. He explains to Humbert that he did not kidnap Lolita. She asked to go with him because it is much more interesting than staying with a terrible stepfather. Humbert tells Quilty that there is no redemption for him and kills him. On the way to Berkeley, Humbert is pursued by the police, but he does not hear them at all. And when his road is blocked, he turns towards the hill gets out of the car and sees the town where Lolita studied. He hears a melody from the sonorous voices of children coming from the gymnasium. Humbert repents because it becomes clear to him that all the horror lies not in the absence of Lolita nearby, but in the fact that her voice is not heard in this choir. Humbert knows that there is no redemption for him either and Lolita will never forgive him. He surrenders to the police. At the end of the year, Humbert dies in prison from a heart attack, and two weeks later, on Christmas, Lolita dies during childbirth. Thank you for watching. Write all your thoughts about this film in the comments. It will be interesting to discuss it with you.